today we're talking about a really interesting case that Tom and I worked on together. Uh, we cannot give the final result because the settlement number is confidential at Georgia Power's insistence. However, as you can probably tell from the picture behind us, this case arose in a hydroelectric dam, specifically in Oliver Dam uh, in my hometown of Columbus, Georgia. Uh, it holds back Oliver Lake. And what happened in this case is that there was a commercial diver who came um, to Oliver Dam and was uh, supposed to dive down within the dam to fix a broken chain. We have a few sort of images here from a PowerPoint we put together, um, and I can show you some of them. Unfortunately, some of this stuff, too, is confidential at Georgia Power's insistence, so we can't show every slide. But this was the name of the case, Paxton against Georgia Power. And we'll sort of zoom in here on Oliver Dam and get a look at, at where it is. And here's our animated version of all our dam. I wish I could show you the next slide because it shows how the inside of the dam worked and how this happened, but we cannot. Um, I can tell this much though, um, the case can get infinitely complicated because we talked about how hydroelectric dam works, how all the people didn't do what they were supposed to do, but you can simplify it this way. When someone dives inside a hydroelectric dam, the dam operator, here, Georgia Power, which both owned and operated the dam, is supposed to close down all the valves so that no water is flowing through the dam. Because if they don't, someone can get sucked into a pipe. And that is exactly what happened here. Um, Alex Paxton was diving within the dam, trying to do his job. Georgia Power left a valve open that they were supposed to close. And because of that, Alex Paxton's arm got sucked into a pipe. With such great pressure, he was underwater that he compressed his chest. Even though he had oxygen flowing to him, he could not inflate his chest, so he suffocated there underwater inside Oliver Dam. We learned a lot in this case about things such as lockout tagout, which I knew nothing about before this case. Tom, what is that? <laughs> yeah, so lockout tagout, or lotto for short, uh, has a bunch of different applications beyond even just diving. In this context, it's exactly what Jeb said. They're, supposed to close all the valves. Um, really anything that um, needs to be closed, the workers, uh, before anyone goes in and, and does work in that area, are supposed to go in and actually make sure, in this case, a valve is closed, and then, then install an actual physical lock um, on the valve so that nobody else can come by and open it. And there's also a tag attached to that and identifies the spe uh, specific piece of equipment. Um, and that's supposed to communicate to other workers who see the lock and the tag that it's safe to work. And nobody can come in and unlock it without a spe specific key. So it's basically a safeguard when you've got all different groups of people working. So you know, even if the left hand doesn't know what the right is doing, it's to keep people safe and it keeps everybody on the same page. Um, unfortunately, there was a breakdown in that system here. Um, so if we we'll look at, um, I guess, 152. pull it up. So we're going to take a look next at the um, inside of the dam. This is where Alex Paxton went it descended into, right? So we're looking on the, we're on the top of the dam looking down inside. Take it away. Yeah, so this is um, the area where Mr. Paxton was diving. You can see um, there's some uh, auto stuff. <laughs> There's some... It's all right. So if, once we get back to this, we should be able to see. Um, I guess we're not. So a red tag down inside on top of the um, some of the equipment he was diving into. Do I have that right? Yeah, that's right. So you can see that um, was in place at the time of the incident. And, um, you know, this is, a, again, a structure, a dam that's got four walls on each side. And this is just basically right in the middle of the dam. So um, what happened here is the before the divers began their work for the day, 
the uh, dive team held a safety meeting. And as part of that safety meeting, Georgia Power told the dive team all the lottos in place, meaning that all the valves that needed to be closed were, in fact, closed. And um, they actually were. This is what Georgia Power said. Right. And the dive team looks, and they see um, this valve here, or this one of those tags. And it actually goes to the middle head gate. There's another one behind it um, underneath that board. And um, there's actually a video. We don't want to show this to you, but um, it's, uh, there's a video that was actually attached to Mr. Paxton's helmet and shows the moments uh, before his death. And he actually um, points to the um, what we call a flapper valve. And uh, that's important because the dive team was only told about one uh, valve, right? One, in this case, they call it a flapper valve, but it served the same function as what we see in uh, this exhibit as a priming valve. Let's pause and give some basics of what we're looking at here. So Plainless Exhibit 8 is a lotto record. So if someone's going to dive down where Mr. Paxton was, this is the form that Georgia Power is supposed to fill out. And you can see there are four items on the list, and each of them is supposed to be closed. The fourth one that's highlighted there uh, is the valve that ended up killing Mr. Paxton. It was supposed to be closed, uh, but it was, in fact, open. So this record was wrong. Um, another problem, as Tom alludes to, is it was a little confusing because there were two similar valves. Um, but this lottery record only had one of the two similar valves, a pinstock priming valve and then um, a flapper priming valve, basically. Right. So there's two valves that serve the same function. Uh, the dive team is only told about one of them. Dive team does uh, their checks. They check for flow using what's called a flow meter. Um, there's detect no flow detected. And, uh, again, operating under the um, understanding that there was a priming valve that had been locked out that Mr. Paxton points to in the dive video, the dive proceeds. Again, as, as Jeb alluded to, the um, valve was actually open, and um, Mr. Paxton's arm was sucked into a pipe as a result. Um, Georgia Power has since updated this form to include uh, a, both priming valves, a flapper and the priming valve, um, to sort of fix that confusion uh, moving forward. But they only made this change after Paxton had died. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what you want to talk about next? Well, um, you know, we could spend all day talking about all the ins and outs of lockout, tagout, and all the different things that went wrong. But, you know, suffice to say, uh, Georgia Power um, even admitted that it messed up. Their, their own lotto and that violated their own procedures. Yeah, they were, like, they were they probably made a bunch of different mistakes. And they started out in meeting, kind of admitting one, and by the end of the case, by the time the case settled, we had them on like three or four different clear errors that they were forced to admit. So there's some of the interesting things to take away from this case. You know, this is a workplace injury. Um, our guy, Mr. Paxton, was here working at Georgia Power, so you would think it's a workers' compensation case, which would have greatly reduced the amount that his family was able to recover after his death. Uh, but here, we were able to find a way around the workers' compensation bar, as we call it, uh, because Mr. Paxson was working for a contractor that came to work at a Georgia Power dam, so the workers' compensation rules didn't apply. That was a big deal. Other sort of notable things, um, there was an OSHA investigation into this death, um, and we got into some of that, but OSHA didn't want to provide us with a lot of information. They kept saying that they couldn't provide it because it was Georgia Power's trade secrets. In all candor, it looked to us like OSHA was trying to protect Georgia Power. So we had to do some work to get more materials from OSHA and then get other stuff uh, from Georgia Power that OSHA wouldn't provide through the court's compulsory um, uh, discovery process. Um, Tom took, I don't know how many depositions in this case. Do you know? Oh, probably like 15. Yeah, and I took a couple. Um, but it, it takes a lot, an awful lot, to figure out how this works when the adversary, Georgia Bauer, is the only one who knows, and they desperately don't want you to figure it out. So <laughs> we have to put a bunch of people under oath and ask some questions for hours and go through hundreds of thousands of pages of documents to figure out what seems fairly simple, which we can explain in this video now 
in a few minutes, but it took days, weeks, months for us to put it all together. Hired a bunch of experts in this case. We had an expert on commercial diving, an expert on two experts on hydroelectric dams, uh, an expert on lotto. Uh, we had the PowerPoint uh, put together. All of that costs a heck of a lot of money to do. So the case expenses get high in a case like this, which brings me to a point I've made a couple of cases recently. If you have a big case, hire a lawyer who will believe in it and put the money into the case that it needs. Because if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have won. Um, and if we hadn't have won, you know, our firm would just be out that money. So a lot of firms won't spend what they need to to win their clients' cases, in my opinion. This case settled at mediation. The court ordered us to go mediate the case, and the case resolved there. Uh, the number is confidential, but we were pleased with it, and Georgia Power was displeased enough to insist that it remain confidential. <laughs> Uh, we worked for a great family. Alex Paxton was a great guy. Um, everyone liked him. His folks on his team said he was hardworking. He was like in line. He had moved up some, was in line to move up to a supervisor position. His family loved him. It, it's a heck of a loss. Uh, an interesting case for us, but you know, we don't want to lose sight of the real tragedy of the case, which is a good man lost his life. Yeah, everybody that, that uh, encountered him had amazing things to say about him. So the world definitely lost a very good man that day. Mm -hmm.